in this game that we that we played here, the forest game, the participants had a very simple task to actually decide how many trees they cut. But if they all try to maximize the individual income, they then all make a decision which are far from optimal. So basically, this is called the tragedy of the commons, where the forest collapses and uh, everyone is worse off. How to really communicate, how to find a good strategy, how to find trust in each other, that's, that's a question that can be explored through the game. And the results of these games can be then linked to the actual applications in the real world, to the actual to the reality. People can actually learn how to make these kind of decisions in, in the real world to improve the conditions, how we live, to improve our management of resources and to make everyone better off. Games can be used in many different ways to improve the quality of the political decision making. Games can be used to encourage public participation in political decision making. And we are very much faced now in the conditions of high uncertainty, of the very of high complexity also. With games we can really look at all these different interactions um, in a compressed time and space. When we put players um, when we put participants together, they can explore the possible futures, in a sense, explore uncharted territories. And because of this, we can look at the what are possible scenarios and make eventually better decisions. I was yesterday at the plenary session, I think there's no solution, no idea, no forward thinking by politicians. So gaming, surely, could be very important here to take people out of their comfort space, overcome resistance, to lock in situations and really think about innovative ideas to go forward. Now it's only lip service. One, and I think gaming, including policy exercises, could be quite exciting.